What's up everybody, Camero here, and welcome to part 58 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at Shiny Pokemon. First, we're going to be looking at ways that we can modify the rate that Shiny Pokemon appear. Then after that, we're going to be looking at different events that we can use to receive Shiny Pokemon. Then after that, we're going to be looking at how we can make Shiny Pokemon appear in trainer battles. And finally, we're going to be looking at Shiny Pokemon sprites, and what we can do to edit them and make them, uh, make them look a little prettier. With that said, let's get into it. So, the very first thing that we're going to look into is how we can modify the rate that shiny Pokemon appear, and this is actually extremely easy to do. All you need to do is go into your script editor, and in the top script here, settings, scroll down a little bit to line 38, and you'll see this variable here called shiny Pokemon chance. Right now, it's equal to 8. What this is, is how frequently a shiny Pokemon will appear, divided by 65,536. So, if we wanted it to be 100%, we would make this number 65,536, because 65,536 divided by 65,536 is 1. However, you know, if we made this like 20,000, then it would be a 1 in 3 chance. So right now the odds of Pokemon appearing are really low, it's 8 out of 65,000. If we wanted to, we could crank that up to like 24 or 100. So it would be 100 out of 65,000. So yeah, that is the easiest way that you can increase the shiny rate. So if you want shiny Pokemon to show up like crazy, you could crank that up to like 10,000 or something if you're a little bit crazy. However, if you want to make it so that way shiny Pokemon appear 100% of the time, that's actually really easy to do as well. There is a switch in Pokemon Essentials that turns on 100% shiny Pokemon rate, which is switch number 31, shiny wild Pokemon. What this will do is make it so that way the Pokemon that appear are always shiny. So if you made an event that turned that on, all the Pokemon that you would run into would be shiny. And you can actually use this switch for legendary Pokemon as well. In the default essentials maps, there is a map called Faraday Island, and on that there's a Mew here. You'll notice that it's using a shiny sprite here, and it turns on switch 31 right before the battle, and then it turns switch 31 off. That guarantees that this PB Wild battle call from you will always be a shiny Pokemon. So if you want to make shiny legendaries, you're going to want to use this switch. It's pretty cool. Another way that you can modify the shiny rate is by giving people the shiny charm. That is an item that increases the rate of shiny Pokemon appearing by three times. If you want to, you could go into the scripts and see how that's defined. Here it is. By just using Control shift f and typing in shiny charm, you can find where they define the increased chance of shiny Pokemon appearing. What this does is it loops three times. And if you wanted to, you could increase this number to six. So that way, now the shiny charm is six times. Or rather, it would be seven because it starts at zero. So. It's looping 0, 1, and 2, so that means it's looping 3 times through to see if it's a shiny Pokemon, and it keeps on rolling. So that's the way the shiny charm works, is it checks that wild Pokemon and sees if it's shiny, and if it's not, then it rolls it again. Is it shiny now? No. Roll again. Is it shiny now? No. And then it does that only 3 times. But yeah, you can increase this number to 5, so now it'll loop 6 times. So it would be 6 times as likely, doubling the uh, effectiveness of the shiny charm. So that's pretty cool and all. But what if we just want to have trainers give us shiny Pokemon instead of running into wild shiny Pokemon? Let's just receive some shiny Pokemon from some very nice people, shall we? So in the Pokemon fan club map that comes with base essentials, there's a lot of different events here that will actually give you Pokemon. And what we can do is look at these as inspiration for how we can receive shiny Pokemon from our own events. And it's actually really easy. There's a starting Pokeball here that just gives us a Mew by calling kernel.pbaddpokemon, but right next to it is another event that does things a little bit more complex, and this is more what we're looking for. So the way that it works is, it defines a new Pokemon here, and sets it to P. So, P equals Pokebattle underscore Pokemon dot new, Pichu, level 30, and the, the own two trainer will be our trainer. So instead, if we wanted to receive a Mew or something else, we could call this... Like, let's give ourselves a Scyther. Or a shiny Scyther is kind of crappy, isn't it? Let's make it a Caesar instead. We can make it level 30, we can make it level 50 if we want. And then here, we can do a whole bunch of things to modify our Pokemon. The command that we go on a call is called Make Shiny. Right now, this event is actually, funnily enough, calling one called Make Not Shiny. 
But instead, if we just call make shiny, we will receive a shiny Caesar from this event. We can make it female, set its form. Let's instead get rid of all of this. Just make it shiny. We could teach its moves if we want to, which is really crazy and cool. So we could give it like X scissor, or is it cross scissor? I don't know. Teach him those moves, calculate his stats. You're gonna wanna call calculate stats at the end whenever you're doing this trainer modification stuff or Pokemon modification. And then and after that, you just do kernel.pb add Pokemon P because P is where we stored the Pokemon that we created here. So calling Pokemon.make shiny is the easiest way to receive shiny Pokemon from events. Another thing that you can do that's actually very interesting is when you receive a Pokemon, you can modify the Pokemon in your party and turn them shiny. There's multiple ways to do this, but a really good example is looking at this trainer right here, who I've also just copied and pasted over here. What she does is she calls PB add foreign Pokemon to your party. And this is essentially her giving you a Pokemon. She says, oh, I can't really take after my Pokemon. Could you take after it for me or look after it for me? So she gives you a Bulbasaur. She says who it's owned to. She gives you a nickname and everything. And then afterwards, you can edit the Pokemon at the end of your party. Very similar to how we edited that Pokemon before, the Caesar that we're giving ourselves in this Pokeball. You can actually do the very similar thing, editing them by calling Pokemon equals dollar sign trainer dot last party. What this is doing is editing the last Pokemon in your party. If you've received a Pokemon from her, the Pokemon will be at the end of your party. So this is calling the last available Pokemon and then editing them. And if we wanted to, we could call Pokemon.makeShiny. So she will make the last Pokemon that we receive shiny. So in this case, she's gonna give us a shiny Bulbasaur with its a, a hidden ability, set ability two. Its nature is gonna be modest. It's gonna be in a Cherish Ball for Ball 15. It's gonna be shiny. So if you want, you can do things that way as well. Just call Pokemon trainer dot last party so for example after you receive your starter what you could do is edit it before you receive them or edit it after you receive them you've got some options if you're a fan of editing your pokemon you can also call this same exact methodology in trading with pokemon so what she does is edits p to be a new pokemon and then it calls start trade with p so PB get one is a Pokemon that you choose or have chosen for the trade, and then it trades with P. And the value of one is set earlier by doing choose tradable Pokemon. I believe I already have a tutorial on trading Pokemon, so if, if you're confused about any of that, check out that tutorial. However, really all we care about is just calling make shiny, which you could do here if you want. And another thing that you can do that's actually very interesting is just edit your Pokemon outright if you'd want to choose them. Like if you wanted to make an NPC who says, pick a Pokemon and I'll make them shiny, you could just do PB choose Pokemon, and then you want to do one three, and it sets the, uh, it's it stores the Pokemon that you've chosen in variable one, and it stores their name in variable three. And then just do PB get Pokemon one, because we've just stored them in variable one, and then uh, make them shiny. So this will, st you can choose a Pokemon and then make them shiny this way. And then it'll say, hey, that Pokemon you've chosen is now shiny. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully that's pretty straightforward on how you can get shiny Pokemon through events. Honestly, just take a look at these and just call make shiny on your Pokemon. It's pretty straightforward. However, what if we wanted to fight a trainer with a shiny Pokemon? That's actually also extremely easy. What I've got done here is I've copied Youngster Ben from the last tutorial, and I just put him here in the corner of the uh, of the fan club. I almost called it a daycare. Anyway, here he is. Here's Youngster Ben, and I've got the trainers.txt open here, and the way that he works is actually super easy. What I've done is scrolled up to the very top of the trainers.txt, and they've already defined a leader Brock here, and this Brock has a shiny onyx. So I'm gonna break that down. I actually copied this onyx and just gave it to Ben. So the way that this works is, you could just give him a Pokemon and a level, but if you wanna go even more in depth, you can add extra fields when defining Pokemon for trainer battles. So the third slot is an item, and then the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh slots are the moves. And then if you wanna go even further, you can set Shiny right here. You can set their nickname, you can set other values as well. I believe when you have true at the very end there, that makes him a shadow Pokemon, so that's also kind of crazy. So if we wanted to give him a shiny Rattata, what we would want to do is take all these fields 
and paste them right there. So now he has a citrus berry and he knows head smash and everything. So what if instead we just delete all these other values? Very easy. One, a two. He could have a nickname if we want. We could name him Ratty. And there we go. Just like that, now he has a shiny Rattata. And we could just delete that. And now one Pokemon. So you just need to type in shiny in this field right here. Let's see, that is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It is the 11th field. Boom, shiny. So now when we fight Youngster Ben, he'll have a shiny Rattata. So let's fight him right now. It'll be pretty straightforward, pretty easy, I imagine. The game's just got a process and we'll get right in there and kick his butt. Shiny Rattata, that'll be easy to beat. My Pokemon are much stronger. All right, let's fight this little boy. Ooh, it's got that music from the last tutorial. And it's very loud. Okay, Youngster Ben, what do you got for me? He's got Ratty. Oh, look at him. He's so shiny. Ooh, I've got a shiny too, so you can kind of, you can kind of get wrecked, Mr. Ratty. <laughs> if you want to give yourself a shiny Pokemon through debug, what you can do is just hit Escape, go to your Pokemon, and then you can look at them and go to debug, and then from there you can just go and find them. Where is that? Is it cosmetic info? Set shininess. There it is. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. It's that easy. It's gonna be that easy. Let's take a look at him. Shiny Chansey? Wow! Shiny Pikachu? Wow! Look at all these shinies we got. If we want to make more shinies, let's actually get back into the game. Sorry, I shouldn't have closed it there. Let's get back into the game. I'm gonna to interact with this tree right here. Choose a Pokemon to make shiny. This is that event before about PB Choose. Let's make a shiny Diglett. Diglett is now shiny! Oh, thank you, Magic Tree. I like the fact that you can make my Pokemon shiny all magically. All you did was change his nose blue. Shiny Tree, I believed in you. That's just a bad sprite. If we wanted to change the sprite, I'm gonna show you how to do that. I don't really like Diglett's shiny sprite too much. Let's go and change that. What I'm gonna do is bust open Photoshop, but you can bust open any uh, image editing software that you want. And from here, you're just gonna wanna go into your Battlers folder. Let's take a look at all of our Pokemon. You'll notice that every Pokemon has a shiny version. A version, excuse me. There's 004, and then 004B for the back sprite, 004S for the shiny sprite, and 004SB for the shiny back sprite. So, we could take a look at all of these Pokemon here and look at all their shinies, and we could edit them if we want as well. Like, take a look at Diglett, for example. Look at this loser. All he's got is a little blue nose. That's not too cool. It's not that cool at all. Let's edit him a little bit if we wanted to. Like, let's do a, let's make him green or whatever. I don't know, color overlay. We can make him red if we wanted to. Um, I'm just gonna do a very simple edit. If you are a much more like passionate sprite artist, then this would be where you can go crazy. There we go, look, he's green. It's terrible, <laughs> but now we could, we could if we wanted to have a new shiny Diglett sprite. And check this out. This is going to be another thing that's going to blow your mind. So we could edit the back sprite and the front sprite as well. But I think you kind of get the idea here. That's pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is actually make something new that I don't think a lot of uh, games utilize as much when they should. If you go into the icons folder, you can see every Pokemon has an icon. They don't have shiny icons, but if you are passionate enough about shiny Pokemon, you can make your own shiny icons. Check this out, what I've done is made a Gyarados and a shiny Gyarados, where I just applied a red filter to it. And if I wanted to, I could find Diglett and I could make a shiny Diglett icon. Let me do that really quick. So I'm gonna change the image mode. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna apply a color overlay to him once again. I'm gonna make him green. Once again, I'm gonna admit that this isn't the greatest looking shiny. In fact, it's pretty terrible. Most people meme on the fact that a lot of shinies are just green re-sprites that are kind of puke and ugly. However, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna make them green. And we would wanna call this Icon 050 S for shiny. If we just called it Icon 050, what that would do is replace the standard Diglett, which we don't want. We wanna make instead a shiny Diglett. So Icon 050 is regular, non-shiny Diglett, Icon 050 S. Shiny Diglett. Let's save it. There we go. And then we can close it. We don't really need that anymore. So, 
Now, let's boot our game again and give ourselves a shiny Diglett. Alrighty. Here's the Pokemon fan club. Here I am. Choose a Pokemon to make shiny. Ooh, you better believe I'm gonna make Diglett shiny. Diglett is now shiny. Thank you. Cool. Now let's look into our bag. Wow, look at him. He's got his shiny icon right there. Since I made a shiny Gyarados icon, let's also give ourselves a shiny Gyarados. Wow. Take a look at that. Look, there's red Gyarados. Isn't that a beaut? Oh, look how beautiful he is. Oh my gosh. Anyway, that'll about do it for this episode. If you want to give yourself the, chi the shiny charm via debug, you can just go into item options, add item, and scroll on down to the shiny charm. I'm gonna scroll on real quick. I'm mashing page down to get to this so I can get to it in a time, timely fashion. There he is, shiny charm. Ta-da. Yay. So this is a key item, and when you hold on to it, it'll just increase the chance of shiny Pokemon appearing by three times. I already covered this in the tutorial. You already know what I'm talking about here. But you can edit that also, so that way you have six times a chance, and it just rolls six times instead. Anyway, I hope this video helped you out and gave you some ideas about how you could implement shiny Pokemon in your game. I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. Um, remember to follow my Twitch. I swear I'm going to stream again sometime soon. I swear. I keep on having nights where I'm like, oh, I could stream. Ah, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm going to work on other things. Uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. I'm just like, I got excuses for everything, you know? I'm just one of those guys. Anyway. Um, so yeah, follow my Twitch. Uh, join the Thundaga Discord. I'm sorry I don't post on there as much as I should, but I want to start posting there more. And uh, once again, thank you all for watching. I hope you appreciated this tutorial, and I hope you learned something. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. And one final note, I hope you have a good one.